like drug-free school zone implies that there is somewhere at some school a zone that is for drugs. History is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Three awesome super producers, Conspiracy Fozzie reporting a topic that we think we all should hopefully cover in an episode of partial episode. The man that's been called a one-man environmental disaster. Thomas Midgley Jr. The played a major role developing leaded gasoline and some of the first chlorofluorocarbons, better known in the United States by the brand name Freon. Both products were later brand banned from a common use due to harmful impact on human health and the environment. He was granted a more than 100 patents over the course of his career, and he's been called a one-man environmental disaster that was uh, all taken from the Wikipedia. I find the fact that he's created two of the most dangerous environmental hazards of our lifetimes fascinating. These are problems that the world is still recovering from, and, you know, like, ghosts are going to haunt us for quite a while. Um, Thank you, and uh, you are. Uh, you have permission to use my name, and uh, I want to thank you all. I've been a fan of your show for a year and a half, and I've been listening to you guys as I work, and it's been helping pass the time. Thank you very much. Let's let's jump fully into this. Okay. Okay. So we're talking about a scientist, a very intelligent engineer, and, and inventor. We're talking about Thomas Midgley. That is M I D G L E Y Jr. Very important because there is a senior who was also an inventor, I believe, and an engineer. <laughs> but this is the junior. And this person is born in the 1800s, I think it was 1889, went to Cornell University and got a degree in engineering and started working for some of the big names in automobiles in the early 1900s. And there was a problem with vehicles around that time. And Ben, I know, I know you got some on this. The problem with these vehicles, because of these internal combustion engines that they had, where there are all these little explosions occurring, moving the pistons up and down, uh, vehicles often had this knocking that would occur. The engine itself would kind of knock around. Um, it was clunky. It's like an old clunker, you might say. Um, and everybody had to deal with it. And, and the automobile industry was looking for a solution. And old Tommy Midgley Jr. came along and said, well, I'm going to try a bunch of things, including putting iodine into the fuel mixture, putting other chemicals, like basically going down the periodic table, like what if we add this one or that one? And uh, <laughs> he found a solution, and it was lead. That's, that's, <laughs> that is why there is now unleaded, un- what did you say? Unadamantian <laughs> gasoline. <laughs> right. Non-cryptonite, no adamantium. <clears throat> that is Big <clears throat> Oil's promise to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you nailed it, Matt. You nailed it. Engine knocking was a, a crazy and a, a real thing. Um, at this point, I think, in time, uh, Midgley Jr. started working for GM around... Early 1900s, called 1916, I think. Uh, he he was trying to figure out what the solution was. He knew the problem had <clears throat> he knew the problem was due to the way that gasoline burns, right, in the cylinders of your uh, garden variety internal combustion engine. But he wasn't he wasn't sure how to like punch it up to to get get it to be a little bit less knocky to to be a bit less of a clunker as you said <laughs> as you pointed out as Fozzie points out this guy found what he thought was a solution which was leaded gasoline and GM was going in the gas game at that time with a proprietary additive 
it wasn't just straight up lead, right? It was something called ethyl lead compound. Well, yeah, because they could they could patent that, right? They could <laughs> trademark that, then they can sell it because you know lead itself. It's not just uh, lead from GM. You know, it's not something you could sell and make a, a huge profit on. But if you patent it, you put it into a thing that goes into your gas tank. Now there's some money for you. And, you know, GM is all corporations, profit driven. So they figured out how to do that. Uh, <laughs> well, and, and I guess we can, I mean, just for the case of this conversation, we can just say what happened to the lead. Uh, we took it out. We put some, we humans and smart engineers like Midgley put other things in there. Uh, it is now ethanol, correct? So you'll see at the gas pump, largely, at least within the United States, I know for sure, a certain percentage of ethanol will be in that gasoline you're adding to your vehicle. And it's serving the same purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you might have seen it called flex fuel before. Uh, the story of ethanol itself is the story of another, I guess we could call it a conspiracy, the story of, of big corn, right? Uh, and aka the reason corn syrup is in so many things that Americans consume. Uh, you know, you, you got so much corn, you got to find a way to do something with it, right? The profits must expand. The thing about Midgley for our purposes here is is this uh it's not as if he were just a brilliant mind unaware of the consequences uh this guy was operating in a world where the dangers of lead exposure were already very well known uh you might not have maybe thought of it if you were someone just popping around your Model T or whatever. But if you were a chemist, it is, I'll say it, it's not even virtually certain. It's absolutely certain you would know this stuff was poisonous. And Matt, from my understanding, Midgley Jr. Uh, kind of had a rep for working with known poisonous substances. Oh yeah, oh he certainly had a, he had a penchant for it. And he himself got lead poisoning. Uh he knew that seven people died uh, from lead poisoning when they were creating the substances, you know, <laughs> uh while his work on on fuel additives. Uh it was it was a known thing. He took a I think it's described in one of these articles, I think from famousscientists.org. Uh there are several amazing articles if you look up Midgley. Um it talks about how he took a, quote, long vacation while suffering from the effects of lead poisoning. Um, <laughs> right. But, you know, but lead isn't the only thing, as was stated by Fozzie, that Midgley had a hand in uh, when it comes to, you know, lead in our environment. Oh, there's this other thing, CFCs, uh, also known as chlorofluorocarbons. Uh, he also <laughs> invented a little thing that we call Freon. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, automobile related in this case helps your vehicle's interior and other parts stay cold, which is a much appreciated thing in the summers, especially here in Atlanta. Uh, the having a cool car, I mean, not necessarily the CFCs, but, uh, <laughs> mm, theoretically an amazing invention that helped everyone until it was in the environment for long enough that we realized, oh, this is bad. <laughs> 